Let's now talk more about the pedals. Um, so organists will play with both of their feet, um, but the pedal part is written just on one stave. Um, the standard range of the pedal board is from C at the bottom of the bass clef up to F above middle C. A few organs will extend to G, but be aware that this is fairly uncommon. The note should be written at eight foot pitch, um, but the usual practice is to always have some 16 foot stops drawn as well, um, which will sound at the octave below for added depth. So if you want to want just the actual pitch sounding for which you write the note, um, you will need to specify eight foot only. Um, this is something I've seen um, written incorrectly in a number of compositions. Um, composers will write the pedal parts at the pitch at which they think it will sound. It needs to be at the, the pitch which you will play, even though you will additionally often have the 16 foot and sometimes the 32 foot beneath that. There are two ways to play the pedal notes. Um, so you can use your toes and you can use your heels. In rapid passage work, um, the most successful form of writing is with alternate feet, um, alternating high and lower notes um, like this. You'll find uh, this all over the place in Bach's music, for instance. That's often much more successful than scalic um, passages, which will um, involve the organist having to cross over feet or use a weird combination of toes and heels. Um, so alternating toes um, in, in fast music um, is quite a good thing to do. Using heels enables the player to play two consecutive notes with the same foot. The maximum stretch of toe to heel, um, if you're playing the notes together, is usually around a third. Um, so it's much easier to play if you have uh, one of them being a white note and one of them a black note. Stretching two white notes together um, is, is dangerous because you may catch the middle white note between the two. It's not impossible, but it's more awkward than say this. Um, what is impossible is to bridge two black notes together with a third. So two, three and four part chords are a possibility um, in, in the pedals. Um, so long as the span between the two notes to be played with the same foot um, is no bigger than around a third. Um, I'll sh uh, show you an example um, of some three and four part chords. It's possible to have two completely independent pedal parts. Um, here's an example of um, quite a successful double pedal part um, by Bach. Um, this is what it sounds like when I add the um, manual parts to that. So see how, what, how much of a rich texture that will create. a bit more variety. Um, the pedals don't always have to provide the role of the bass. Um, it's fairly boring if the pedal is always droning away with long notes uh, down at the bottom of the pedal board. Um, it also doesn't need to be present all the time. Uh, so do remember you can just write uh, for man a passage for manuals only or conversely you can also have a, uh, a solo passage just for the pedals. 
Having the melody in the pedal part can be really effective. Um, many toccatas are written in this way. Um, here's an example of that. So having the melody in the pedal part there enables the hands to do some more interesting things. Um, having the melody high up, so at the top of the texture, um, plays on a four foot stop can be really, really beautiful. Um, here is an example of that supported by rich chords in the hands. And the other thing it can do is um, provide the middle of the texture. Um, so this next example um, has the left hand doing some very agile, um, a running bass with lots of semiquavers, uh, which would be quite difficult to play um, in the pedals. Um, so we have an example of the pedal part uh, providing um, the, the sort of tenor, tenor line melody. Um. 